Welcome to Watch Therefore, the program designed to help the disciple of Messiah Jesus obey His command to watch therefore and be ready. For you don't know the hour of the day your Lord is coming. Dove Schwartz here at the Sea of Galilee, encouraging everyone who's watching more than ever to watch therefore and be ready. Messiah Jesus is coming for His people any moment. Zion's king will restore the land, the clouds will part, and our king will descend the fire in his eyes, seven stars, his right hand. I'm so thankful to be with you once again on the program Watch Therefore. I want to start off by telling you that this program is being sponsored by our ministries, Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nations. Our co-founder of Blessing Israeli Believers, John McTurnan, and myself, we've learned from the Word of God that one of the best ways to bless Israel is to bless Israeli believers in Messiah Jesus. And then our ministry poured out for the nations. We've learned that it's important to obey God's word regarding take the, taking the gospel and discipleship in Messiah Jesus and the Watch Therefore message to the nations of the world. Those two ministries are sponsoring this program today. Also, I want to tell you that we're going to break away from our previous uh, teaching series because of this special time of year and we're going to have a couple special programs. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you that we're together around your word in this special season that even points to your sin coming. Please bless all of our viewers today, Holy Father. We ask it in Messiah Jesus' name. Amen. Well, once again, yes, these fall feasts are upon us. In Israel, we call them the Chagim, appointed times by the Lord. They are Yom Truah, Yom Kippur and Sukkot. And remember that all of the previous feasts of the Lord have already been fulfilled by Messiah Jesus. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and Pentecost, Shavuot, which is Pentecost, leaving the fall feasts to be fulfilled. Now, Yom Truah is traditionally called by the Jewish people Rosh Hashanah which means the head of the year. But we know that's not biblical, that's not true, because Passover is the head of the year, the beginning of the year in the Bible. And, and so, this fall feast, Yom Truah, it's the day of blowing trumpets, the feast of trumpets. We see it introduced in Leviticus chapter 23. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel, saying in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. So this special day is set aside as a Sabbath that's marked by blowing shofar out, ram's horns that are fashioned to blow like a trumpet. And also in the book of Numbers, there's two silver trumpets the Lord commanded to be blown at different times, including the feasts of the Lord. And if you look at other feasts in the Bible, they all have many more places where they're explained in great detail in the Old and New Testament. Why does this feast seem more mysterious? And what does this mean prophetically? Well, there's something that was a mystery until the time in the ministry of Apostle Paul. Let's look at it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. 
Paul begins to unpack and write more clearly about what has been up until the time of his ministry, a great mystery, a time where Messiah Jesus will come down in the clouds. The dead in Messiah will be raised and those who are alive and remain at that time will be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air, to go be in that place the Lord has been preparing for us for 2,000 years almost. And so this is the rapture. And some confuse this trumpet with other trumpets in Bible prophecy. But Yom Truah clears up the confusion. You see, when Jewish people celebrate this feast, they do so by blowing the shofarot in the synagogue. And when they do so, there's a series of blasts by the shofar that ends with Tekia Hagadol the long blast. It's as long as possible a blast where they blow in the shofar until there's no more breath. This is the last trumpet. So this last trumpet Paul speaks of is Tekiah Hagadol of the Feast of Trumpets. Paul says it this way in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, the dead in Messiah will rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up with them together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we always be with the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Any moment we can experience Yom Truah, where the Lord comes back for us in the clouds. He says, watch therefore and be ready. Hallelujah. And, and remember this, with regard to, to watching for the coming of the Lord, uh, during times of revival, so many are preparing and watching for his coming, like in the Jesus movement in the late 60s and 70s that swept across America and around the world. So many in the body of Christ were talking about looking for the coming of the Lord and the rapture. But in times of deadness and lukewarmness, not so much, which is the order of much of the church today. But it doesn't have to happen to you. You can seek after the Lord with all of your heart and he will meet you there. You will find him there and you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and watch for him to come and be ready. Hallelujah. Well, the next feast I want to talk about is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So think of this. The Lord gave the law of Moses uh, just after the time of the Egyptian bondage where the children of Israel were set free by the Lord from slavery in Egypt. And, and the community center of the law of Moses was the tabernacle in the wilderness and then later the temple in Jerusalem. And, and the feasts of the Lord were a big part of Jewish life and community and, and th the means by which they would know the Lord, Yehovah of Israel. And, and their sin which separates Elohim, God from man, was annually addressed in the tabernacle and the temple at Yom Kippur. Their sin annually was temporarily and ceremonially covered or atoned for until next year at the Day of Atonement. Let's see the introduction in Leviticus 23. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Also the tenth day of this seventh month shall be the Day of Atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And you shall do no work on that same day for it is the Day of Atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. Now what we're going to do is unpack this more. And, and listen, you don't want to go anywhere. This is going to be so important and it will hit you right where you live and bless you today. We've got some special things coming up. Uh, but first, we've got some other things we want to share with you that are very important. So remember, watch therefore and be ready. Messiah Jesus is coming any moment. In Matthew chapter 24, our Messiah Jesus tells his disciples to watch therefore and be ready. We don't know the hour or the day our Lord is coming. And then he introduces the good and faithful servant of Matthew 24 and then in Matthew 25. This program is designed to make faithful disciples of Messiah Jesus who will hear those words from him. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. The message is spreading all over the world as this program now goes into 200 countries and 200 million homes, reminding everyone who watches to watch therefore and be ready. Many who believe in Messiah Jesus understand what the Bible says about blessing Israel, that the Lord says, I will bless those who bless you. We've learned that blessing Israeli believers in Messiah Jesus is one of the best ways to bless Israel. Our co-founding partner of Blessing Israeli Believers, 
John McTurnan and I founded this ministry with a mission statement that we exist to uniquely bless and empower Israeli followers of Messiah Jesus to be the shining light to Israel and the nations of the world. You can join with us in blessing Israeli believers in Messiah Jesus. We take very seriously our Lord's command to take the gospel of Messiah Jesus to the nations like we just did September 2019 in Rwanda. The gospel, discipleship, and the Watch Therefore message, all of these I got to preach in Rwanda, in churches, on hillsides, in many different places. And we saw between 70 and 80 people pray to receive Jesus as Lord and hundreds come forward and commit their lives to be the good and faithful servant, to watch for King Jesus to come and to live every day ready for his coming in the clouds for us, to take us back to that place he's prepared for us. Join us and be poured out for the nations. I encourage everyone to go to our website, watchtherefore.tv and sign up for our monthly newsletters. You can receive them online or by post so you can see what the Lord is doing here in Israel with blessing Israeli believers and in the nations with our ministry poured out for the nations. For example, the mission trip I just spoke about, there's important and exciting details about what the Lord did in Rwanda. You can be praying and participating and see the fruit of your labor as people are saved, blessed here in Israel and the nations. Sign up for our monthly newsletters at watchtherefore.tv. As you can imagine, the Watch Therefore Media, Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nation's Ministries costs a lot of money. And I certainly can't do this alone, but that's okay, because my help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And before I talk more about finances, let me say this, if you haven't received Jesus as your savior yet, please don't send any money into this ministry. It's our desire that you would receive him as Lord and Savior and be our guest today. But for those who understand the principles of sowing and reaping and laying your treasures up in heaven, we believe the Watch Therefore ministry is a great place for you to participate. We can watch therefore together and be ready. Did you know that your Bible teaches you that as a believer in Messiah Jesus, you are a son or daughter of Abraham. And remember, the Lord made very specific promises to Abraham and his descendants, of course, the nation of Israel, but also those in the nations grafted in to many of their promises through faith in Messiah Jesus. And Abraham is all through the Old and New Testaments. The Lord gave him principles to help him walk out a blessed life even in times of great adversity. And everyone can see the great adversity all around us in the world as increasingly so much of the world is shaking its fist in the face of God. But he still wants to bless his people who walk after his ways. And in my book, Activate the Blessings of the Abraham Covenant, you can learn how to walk out a life of faith in Messiah Jesus by the principles he gave to our spiritual father Abraham. And for a donation of any amount to our ministries, just make sure you write in the memo section of the check or online the ATB book or ATB. We'll send out a copy to you. In this book, you'll learn how to be a true friend of our Creator, identify promised blessings, understand authentic versus counterfeit blessings, position yourself for blessings, learn how to avoid great unnecessary trouble, know how to speak, think, and live a blessed life, prepare yourself for a blessed eternity, and activate the blessings that are all around you today. Activate the blessings of the Abraham Covenant. Dove Schwartz here just outside of Jerusalem with our very special Blessing Israeli Believers partner, my brother in Messiah Yeshua, Oded Shoshani. He's a pastor of a special congregation in Jerusalem. And there's a passage I wanna share with you. In Romans 15, the Apostle Paul said, for it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who were in Jerusalem. It pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors, for if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister them in material things. Pastor Oded Shoshani has a very specific relationship with blessing Israeli believers. As we get through him, we get to help some of the poor saints in Jerusalem. Can you share a little bit with our viewers, Oded? First, it's a blessing. First and foremost, it's a blessing to 
to serve our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. It is a blessing to know him, to know his love, and to walk in his, in his statues and have a friend and a partner. So thank you for that. Um, Yeshua said to us that we will always have the poor. Uh, in our congregation, we serve the poor. We also serve our young adults. But we really are thankful and grateful for the help that we have for the poor. We have people, we are helping them with food coupons and other ways to allow them to finish the month. Blessing Israeli believers and through Blessing Israeli believers, you donors have been a great blessing for us. Thank you so much for that. Well, Pastor Oded, you also have been a great friend and it's an honor and a privilege for us to get to partner with you. Amen. And I know many who are already partnering with Blessing Israeli believers feel the same way. Pray, ask the Lord, look at this scripture I read and that Pastor Oded mentioned and consider blessing Israeli believers even in Jerusalem. Amen. Welcome back to Watch Therefore. Earlier in the program, I introduced Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, where the Lord would ceremonially and temporarily, annually, atone for Israel's sin. Now, if you'll stay with me through these detailed teachings in the scriptures, it's really going to bless you. I'm going somewhere with this, and it will hit you right where you live in such a blessed way. First, let me talk about the two goats and the bull offering of Yom Kippur, Leviticus 16. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot, for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat on which the Lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and to let it go as a scapegoat into the wilderness. So two goats picture our Savior taking away our sin. And I'll address that more in just a moment. The high priest Aaron he takes the sin offering into the Holy of Holies to the mercy seat. The blood of the bull is for his own sin and the goat for Israel's sin. Let's continue in Leviticus. And Aaron shall bring the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bull as the sin offering, which is for himself. Now down to verse 14. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the mercy seat on the east side. And before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some of the blood, which is it with his finger seven times. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people, bring its blood inside the veil, do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bull and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions for all their sins. And so he shall do for the tabernacle of meeting which remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. So the blood of the bull and, and one of the goats is sprinkled on the mercy seat and the other goat, Leviticus 16, beginning verse 20. And when he has made an end of atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat, confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions concerning all their sins putting them on the head of the goat and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to an uninhabited land and he shall release the goat in the wilderness. So Aaron the priest would ceremonially transfer the sin of Israel onto the scapegoat and send it into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. In the Old Testament, there are pictures and types and shadows of our Lord Jesus. And so, look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. You see, our Adonai, our Lord Jesus, partially fulfills Yom Kippur at His first coming. 
the blood of the goat and bull that are sprinkled on the mercy seat represent the blood of Messiah Jesus that was splattered violently by scourging and crucifixion for our sins. Folks, it was a bloody mess. And, and this is the seriousness of sin that is so often mocked and dismissed here in Israel, in the nations of the world, and even in some churches today. The scapegoat represented our sins being removed as far as the east is from the west at the hand of a suitable man, the man in the glory, our Savior, Jesus. Look at Psalm 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Oh, thank you, King, Savior, Lord Jesus. He died on the cross, rose from the grave, and then went into the temple in heaven with his sinless blood. He then eternally paid for our sins. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And listen to this passage. Leap off of the pages into our hearts, minds, and lives from the Old Testament pictures here in the feast, even into the new covenant realities of our born-again lives. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place, once for all having obtained eternal redemption. Yet there's two more aspects of Yom Kippur yet to be fulfilled. It pertains to we who are in the ecclesia. That's the Greek word that's translated church in English Bibles. It pertains to we who are the ecclesia and also to Israel. You see, Israel would wait eagerly outside the tabernacle to confirm and rejoice as the high priest would come out that Elohim had accepted the sacrifice of Yom Kippur. Today, we who are the born-again bride of Messiah Jesus eagerly wait for him to return and take us back to that place. He has been preparing for us for almost 2,000 years. Like they waited outside the tabernacle for their high priest, having their sin already covered, today we are to be eagerly waiting for our Savior, High Priest, Messiah Jesus, who is eternally not annually, not temporarily, but eternally taken away our sins. Listen to this passage in the book of Hebrews. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that, she, that he should suffer him, excuse me, not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Are you eagerly waiting for this King Savior Jesus to come? Are you watching? Are you getting ready? The second yet to be fulfilled matter of Yom Kippur. Well, we're going to go to Jerusalem for me to discuss that. Hallelujah. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Watch therefore and be ready. I'm so thankful to be here in the city of our great soon coming King Jesus. We're in Jerusalem to share and to better understand the conclusion of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Because the time is very close where the High Priest will step out of the Holy of Holies in Heaven, our great Savior, Jesus. Why? Well, about 99.5% of Israel, the Jewish people, do not yet believe in our Savior, Jesus, and are still in their sins. But in the final act of the Day of Atonement, we can think of Romans 11, 25 through 27 that says, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you become wise in your own opinion. 
that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And as it is written, all of Israel will be saved. For the deliverer will come out of Zion and turn ungodliness for Jacob. Turn ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant with him. When I take away their sins. Another passage in Zechariah where the Lord says that they will look upon him whom they have pierced and lament for him as one mourns for an only son. It's when Israel, as a nation that has survived the great tribulation, just a remnant, all collectively receive Messiah Jesus as Lord and their sins are taken away. The final act of Yom Kippur. What about you? As these things are upon us right now, we are not only in the season this year, but in the season of all the generations, we are that one that will see this King Messiah, Yeshua, return to judge the world in righteousness. Have you received him as your Savior? Has he washed away your sins? So remember this, and, and, and for some of you, it may be even now that you need to receive him. Know that he died on the cross for your sins. He was buried on the third day. He rose from the grave and he wants you to have your sins washed away. He wants to forgive you of all your sins right now. What do I have to do? Turn away from your sins. Begin to repent and trust in Messiah Jesus and what he's done on the cross to pay for your sins. And that certainly he is alive and he's about to return. Put your faith in Messiah Jesus. I'm a sinner, Lord, but I know that you love me and don't want me to go to hell. Save me, forgive me, wash my sins away and give me a new life that honors God as I watch for you and get ready for you to return. Amen. If you're doing that, listen, there's some contact information at the bottom of your screen. Use it. Contact us. We want to send you a free brochure to help you begin your new life in Messiah Jesus. And for everyone watching, know this, more than ever in this feast season, we should remember to watch therefore and be ready. Messiah Yeshua is coming for us any moment. Thank you for watching the program today. Watch Therefore is sponsored by the friends and partners of Watch Therefore Ministries. In future programs, we'll have many more Watch Therefore teachings from the Bible, worship, and exciting interviews with our believing partners in Israel and around the world. Please contact us at doveforisrael at gmail.com. That's D-O-V-F-O-R-I-S-R-A-E-L at gmail.com. And if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, you can fill out a contact form on the website watchtherefore.tv. We also have audio programs available on our website watchtherefore.tv. We are on social media since it is a great tool to share the gospel and communicate with one another. You can also find us there at Watch Therefore TV. Until next time, we're watching for King Jesus to return. Watch Therefore and be ready. Slain, he'll come again. Our conquering king on that day, his sword will go forth to take back and restore.